I just made a new Discord server, so feel free to join by clicking the link in the description. BTMC has been a top player for several years now. He has remained inside the top 100 since 2018 and has accomplished things many people dream of doing. He has become one of the best Nomad Hard Rock stream players in the entire world, set legendary scores that only a few people can replicate, and is one of the only people to win both a Corsair's Open and OSU World Cup. And he did that within the same year. And while he might be one of the best OSU players in the world, he also proved that he might be an even better entertainer as he quickly grew to be OSU's most popular streamer. He is by far the biggest pioneer for bringing in new players to the scene, as well as pushing Osu into the mainstream media. Yet, despite his accomplishments, people often brush them aside and turn to the memes surrounding him. People would rather call him a Genshin streamer than admit he is a top player, he inhales more copium than the average drug addict does crack, and he has been sniped so many times it's surprising that he is still standing to this day. His charismatic and sometimes goofy personality makes it easy to create memes of him, and it also makes it really easy to love him for what he does. But how did we get here? How did a guy go from FCing songs with a baguette to becoming one of Osu's most recognizable figures and an Osu champion? And how did BTMC become the community figure Osu needs, but doesn't deserve? Why do I want her to step on me? In the realm of Osu content creation, you can argue that there are two types of content creators. Players that are watched solely for their gameplay at the highest level, and others that are known for their engaging personality and being a great entertainer. But there isn't a single player in the entire world that strikes a better balance of both worlds than BTMC. A young Edward Ling created his YouTube channel on June 27th, 2013 under the name Beastroll MC, and he would upload his first video one day later. His first video showcased his time spent on MC PvP, a highly competitive Minecraft server. He even uploaded god damn it one of ed's biggest inspirations back in those days was gaze mcgee whom you might know nowadays as arison when arison started playing osu in august of 2013 ed would follow suit and try the game out for himself when he created his osu account on august 22nd 2013 however he wasn't really immersed in the game and didn't play a lot until 2014 so he continued to make minecraft his primary focus on youtube from 2013 to 2014, there were no signs of Osu to be found on his YouTube channel, but he slowly began to play more and more in the background, and eventually, on November 28th, 2014, Ed would upload his first Osu video. In the description of this video, he included a straw poll asking his viewers whether or not he should start uploading Osu videos to his channel, which people seemed to be on board for. Imagine if people said no to the straw poll. How differently would things have played out? Butterfly effect aside, Ed would listen to his viewers, and slowly but surely started uploading more and more Osu content to his YouTube channel as he continued to play more and more. In 2015, Ed would make the shift from Minecraft content to Osu content and started to upload live plays and cool scores he set. At the same time, he improved at a pretty good rate. He would reach 5,000 PP by the end of 2015, just two years after he started playing, which put him in the top 3,000. And as he continued to improve, he continued to set respectable scores. He would also upload his, and some say he never played Osu again, YouTube video, which actually ended up being his most popular video on his channel. Mysteriously, after uploading a YouTube video on Christmas Day, he would vanish for three months. After trying to install Windows 10, his computer was completely bricked. The same PC he had used for several years was working perfectly well, and that in Ed's words, just shat itself when he tried installing Windows 10. This storm of events forced him to get a new PC and put everything on hold for a good while. But sometimes there can be blessings in even the worst situations. Situations. Thanks to one of his friends giving him a graphics card, he was able to do everything perfectly fine without fear of anything breaking down. And this introduced arguably the most important content change for BTMC. Twitch streaming. Ed did do the occasional off-ball stream on Twitch every once in a while with his old PC, but it wasn't his primary focus at the time. His Twitch channel was created soon after his YouTube channel on- What do you see it? Are you f***ing serious? 2016 was when Ed started to take streaming much more seriously. His YouTube content started to shift from live plays and score posts to the type of content most people discovered him with. Twitch highlights. In contrast to other Osu streamers, Ed's Twitch highlights were more centralized around him as a person, and in conjunction with his improvement, made them all the more engaging. His Twitch highlight videos would garner tens of thousands of views, and simultaneously introduced more people into his streams. 2017 was when everything seemed to click for Ed. In March, he would reach the top 300 in the world, and got partnered on Twitch in May. A lot of us probably discovered Ed among the crazy things he did in 2017, such as when he played Osu in a Ram cosplay, absolutely destroyed his headset, FC'd a song with a baguette, and when his viewers decided to- What was that? <clears throat> it was also clear that Ed was becoming a great specialist in longer consistency-based stream maps. He would crack the top 200 for the first time in September 2017, but his growth as a player was mostly overshadowed by all the wacky sh** he would do on stream, and this continued to be a running trend as time went on. 
As 2018 rolled around, Ed continued to push his skill and find new ways to entertain his stream. He would upload some of the most popular videos to his YouTube channel, such as when he FC'd the off-brand, Airman and sniped Raphis, the Mayday Aspire map, and when he sent the Poon to snipe Abyssal on Hibana after he sniped Ed. Additionally, the amplitude of craziness that his Twitch highlights brought to the table somehow amplified. How do you get more crazy than dressing up as a girl in front of your viewers? Well, how about playing Osu with a toaster on your head and your brother bringing in a duck to your room, and having that duck take a shit on your keyboard. Uh... What? Alongside the extra craziness, Ed blossomed into one of the best stream players in the entire game in 2018. He would reach the top 100 in May, and since then, he has never left the top 100. He would also reach the top 50 for the first time in October, and set a myriad of stream scores, like his Hard Rock FCs on Sidetrack Day and Honesty, which were 755 and 804 PP respectively. What's crazy is that he didn't even have a 600 PP play yet, and he skipped straight to 750 and then 800. The scores that he was setting were only matched by the best stream players in the entire game. But keep in mind that I said his scores were matched. The thing about Ed's scores is that he never really had a unique score. Calling it a lack of skill wouldn't be an accurate depiction, as he was more than capable of setting insane scores. What is more plausible is that with his popularity, he became a bigger target for his scores getting sniped, leaving him no chance to set a score without it immediately being put at risk. So what does he do in this situation? Well, he pushes for a score that everyone else Else has given up on. On December 29th, 2018, Sotarx's Raise My Sword was ranked. It was a map designed to be a 1000 PP play for Hard Rock players, and so many of the top Hard Rock stream players flocked to set the score. But the space streams proved to be too much for all of them to handle, and so everyone stopped trying to set the score. Everyone, except for Ed. Three months passed without a single Hard Rock FC, but one fateful day, on February 25th, 2019, Ed would do this. OH MY GOD! This was probably one of the most iconic and hyped moments in Osu history. After a Hard Rock nerf got rid of his only 800 PP play, this play would take it back in huge fashion. The best stream players in the entire game put in countless attempts, but could never set the score. Ikki put in more than 100 tries, Farvalian has almost 300, and Umbre has almost 900 tries. Yet, it was only Ed that was able to set the score. How much the score meant to Ed, his viewers, and the game as a whole could be summarized by what Ed said. I finally have a score that's actually unique. That's the thing that I'm most proud of, dude. Fuck the PP system. Alright. I have a score that no one else has ever done. Finally, he had a score so great, it sent ripples through the community. And finally, he had a unique score that he could call his own. What? This is the BTMC effect. Whenever he sets a score considered to be unique or cool, it will be sniped sooner or later. It can be literally any number one score that he sets, and it will be gone before you know it. In fact, let me run through a small list that includes more of his scores that got sniped. The first FC on Prelude to Bereavement. Gone. The first FC on Glorious Crown. Goodbye. The first 99% HDHR FC on The Deceit. Sayonara. And perhaps the most egregious of all, the very first FC on Osu Favorites. A map which had no FCs for one whole year was sniped in. Come close here for a second. 40 minutes. 40. Like I've said before, it's not like Ed lacks the skill to produce a unique score, it's just that he has an army of people waiting for him to do something just to snipe him. Not only does his popularity make him an easy target, seeing his reaction to getting done dirty over and over again is admittedly pretty funny. No! No! Of all fucking people! No! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Ed. But sniping aside, Ed continued to grow as a player and a content creator. 
However, if you were to look at his Osu profile, you might notice something strange. The lack of a tournament badge. This was surprising, especially considering how good of a player Ed had become. But 2019 was when everything had clicked. Ed was part of Team Donkey Kong crew for Test Tournament 2, a tournament hosted by Cavalboy with its unique 8v8 style and up to 16 players on a team. This team had some of the best tournament players in the world, some of whom you will recognize. After emerging from the group stage undefeated as the first seed, the team tore through the entire tournament, only dropping two maps before making it to the grand finals. There, they would face the number two seed floating Conquest. Their team had their own fair share of godlike players, so these grand finals would be their toughest test yet. But on the week of the grand finals, Ed would have an absolute magical week. On April 25th, 2019, he would reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, and the very next day, he would reach 100,000 followers on Twitch, becoming the first Osu content creator to reach 100k on both platforms. And then two days after that, on April 28th, 2019, Donkey Kong crew would edge out Floating Conquest 7-6, taking first place and giving Ed his first tournament back. And things didn't stop there. In May, he was officially sponsored by G Fuel, and in June, with his FC on the sun, the moon, the stars, he would reach his peak rank at number 30 in the world. At this point, he was undoubtedly one of the best stream players in the entire world, as well as one of the best hard rock players in the entire world. With an added emphasis on tournament play, he was on his way to rounding off his skill set to be one of the game's elite, as if top 30 in the world was nothing in comparison to what he would accomplish. And spoiler alert, it was in fact nothing in comparison for what the future would hold. As the world was shut down in 2020 due to... external reasons, Ed would continue to expand his skills and focus more on tournament play. This also consequently resulted in less YouTube uploads solely based on dumb antics, since there was much less to highlight thanks to the lockdown. But this was an overall positive to Ed's growth as a player, as evidently shown in Osu TV Size Tournament 2020. He would be playing on Team Rubber Conquest, which featured some of the best North American tournament players. They would emerge from the qualifying stage as the number one seed, and would tear through the entire tournament, not losing a single map until they met up against Floating Up, a primarily Korean-based team that was considered one of the best teams in the world. The match went down to the wire, going to tiebreaker. And that's when Ed came up absolutely clutch. Rubber Conquest! Rubber, rubber Conquest! It's actually doing it! Last quarter! And we are it seeing... It doesn't matter! Open. It doesn't Fire matter! Just look at both combos! They do have this full combo so far! And look the score! It's over! It's over! A tiebreaker FC to take down one of the best teams in the world. Talk about an exclamation point. They would play each other again in the grand finals, where Rubber Conquest would win 7 to 5, giving Ed his second profile batch. This momentum would carry into Ed's next massive tournament appearance USA States Cup 2020. Representing Virginia alongside Tony, Rectagon, One Tabby, Sergeant R, and Chrono 5 as the second seed, they would claw through the bracket fairly easily. Surprisingly, the favorite to win the entire tournament, South California, took a shocking 6 3 loss to Ohio in the winner's bracket semifinals. And when Virginia beat Ohio, 7-1, they were on the winner's side of the Grand Finals. Throughout USA States Cup history, the Californiers had not lost a single time, and when SoCal fought their way back into the Grand Finals from the loser's bracket, it seemed like Virginia would be the ones to finally end their streak. SoCal will be eliminated. On the biggest tournament stage of Ed's career thus far, what would happen to him and the Virginians? Well, what happened was demoralizing, to say the least. The Grand Finals were a complete massacre. SoCal kept their foot on Virginia's throat the entire time, only surrendering one map throughout both matches of the Grand Finals, including a clean 7-0 sweep to take the tournament. It was a pretty polarizing low compared to what he experienced in OTST 4 months ago. It was a sight no one wanted to see in the Grand Finals, and for the viewers on Edge stream that day, it broke everyone's hearts. Fuck. <laughs> Normally, Ed is the cheerful person that entertains the Osa community, and he clearly loves doing so. But as he watched his team he worked so hard to be a part of get dismantled, it understandably broke him, and he burst into tears. Just hearing the pain in his voice is really tear-jerking. Not just because we're not used to seeing him this sad, but also because he worked so damn hard to get to this point. All for it to go out like this. I tried literally everything, bro. I tried my absolute fucking hardest, dude, but it wasn't enough. 
but it showed all of us a different side of Ed. A hidden side kept behind all of his crazy antics. More than anything, he wants to be the best player he could possibly be, and he will never settle for anything less. While he jokes that he will destroy White Cat, Emrek, or any other top player, he didn't say that to troll. He might say those things out of sarcasm, and the chat may blow him up with copium emotes, but he meant every single word he said. And in his lowest and absolute weakest moment as a player, he conveyed a clear message to everyone. I'm going to get better. I'm going to improve. And one day I'll beat Vaxi. I'll beat Idki. I'll beat Monk. I'll beat everyone. He will destroy everyone in his path. He will become the best. And he will never stop until he does so. And he was very right, as this crushing defeat seemed to be the straw that broke the horse's back. August 2020 marked the start of Corsair's Open, one of Osu's most premier tournament series alongside the Osu World Cup. And we'd be playing for the nation alongside Eryu, Apraxia, Badu, Bartek, Dumi, Fancy Lad, and Arison. Who would have thought that he would be playing in a major Osu tournament alongside the person he considered to be his main inspiration a few years ago? Sentiment out of the way, this team was stacked. They would make it all the way to the grand finals while only dropping one set in the process, where they would play against floating up. Since they were the winner's bracket champion and the tournament didn't want to deal with a bracket reset, they were given one free point in the grand finals in a first to three set match. They notched their second point on the board when they took the first set 4-1, and they were on championship point when they took a 3-2 lead in the second set. And and no one wanted the tournament win more in the last map than Ed did. If BTMC is going to run away with this now, he is the massive combo. Apraxia is matching Bubbleman and Doomy is matching Okinamo. There's really nobody to match Flying Tuna, but an FC on a map this long is a ton of score. BTMC dropping accuracy everywhere, but he doesn't break. He's still going through the long stream here. If he hits this long stream, it's over. There's just no way. He's still holding combo. The stream is still continuing. BTMC is going on the long stream. He hits it. He's shaking so bad. BTMC. He's gonna messing. shake off the stream. At There's some a point. quarter of the map. There's a quarter of the map left. He just has to hold for a couple more seconds. He's almost there. The score lead is 250k on a map this long. That is destructive. BTMC is absolutely going off. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why he was picked for OWC. Oh my goodness. Is that it? 1422275. We got it! We fucking got it! No fucking way! Absolute insanity. His cursor might shake, but his combo didn't break. And he became a Corsace champion. Not only did he win Corsace, he helped Arison win his first tournament badge. The person he grew up admiring. The person who inspired him to play Osu in the first place. Now they were able to share a moment in Osu history forever. This was by far Ed's greatest tournament accomplishment but there were greener pastures lying ahead. Up to this point, Ed never made the US roster for the Osu World Cup. This is more of a tell for how ridiculously strong the United States is as a nation. Ed would be considered one of, if not the best player on other teams if he played for other countries, but inside the US, people don't consider him to be top 5 or even top 10 in terms of tournament skill. But in 2020, BTMC would finally make his first OWC roster. With how deep the United States roster was, Ed was mainly used for consistency based maps in the map pool. After emerging from the qualifiers as the first seed, the United States would breeze through all of their opponents. They would face Germany in the winner's bracket semifinals. With how much Ed talked about destroying White Cat, it was pretty much spoken into existence when the United States dominated Germany 6 to nothing. In the winner's bracket finals, the United States beat Canada 7 to 1. This meant that Ed was one match win away from winning the Osu World Cup. Germany would make it back to the grand finals from the loser's bracket and earn their run back against the United States. And this time, things were much closer. The US always had the lead, but Germany would never let them go more than two maps ahead. But the US reached match point after taking a 6 to 4 lead. Thanks to an early break point on the first map of the match, the US could win the entire thing on their own pick. But things wouldn't come that easy. Wow! Germany, digging deep, doing the work that needed to be done. They pull out a legendary moment, forcing tiebreaker in game one. A strong performance on map 12 by Germany on the US's pick even the match at 6-6 and sent the grand finals to the tiebreaker map. Ooh parts by Camellia. What followed was one of the most intense moments in OWC history, and while Ed himself wasn't playing in it, he watched from the sidelines as his team tried their damnedest to 3P. On the other side of things, Germany was in uncharted territory. This is the first OWC Grand Final Germany has been a part of, and they were not gonna let this slip so easily. Not only were they trying to end the United States streak, 
They were trying for the first OWC title in team history. And there is no better song for this tiebreaker to take place on than Ooh Parts. Camellia specifically made Ooh Parts for the 2020 Osa World Cup Grand Finals, and with how chaotic the soundtrack is, everyone wanted this Grand Final to go to the tiebreaker. And everyone got their wish. The top two teams in the world met in the Grand Finals of Osu's biggest stage. It was a match exemplified by its unpredictability and chaos. And those two elements are what make this tiebreaker something we will not soon forget. It's just Vaxi, but Whitecap breaks his Dust Dice versus Vaxi right now. Kablaze finds another break, but Swaggy Spicer does as well. Double break for Germany. It is it breaks Vaxi everywhere. The United States would have to completely to fall apart. They would have to completely fall apart at the ending here for anything to happen. White Cat's trying to make it work, but as long as Vaxley holds, it doesn't matter. No chance. It's no ever. matter what Vaxley so and White Cat do. There's and so as much. the map comes to a close, the U.S. sprinting ahead with Vaxley, Kablaze, and Swaggy Swagster. It's but all brilliant over. performances. Blaze and ladies and finish. gentlemen, you're 2020. That's it. Osu World That's it. Cup champions. That's Once it. Once again, the United States. Holy shit! Of America. Oh my gosh. Holy, Holy shit. shit. Yes. Let's go! <laughs> As chaos reigned from the beat map and combos broke left and right, the US would edge out Germany, winning the 2020 Osu World Cup. With this win, Ed became one of the only players in the entire world to win both Corsace Open and the Osu World Cup, and he amassed his major feat in the same year. In just a span of a few months, Ed went from experiencing his lowest point of a player to becoming an Osu champion. He was right after all. He said he would destroy everyone, and he came out on top on Osu's biggest stage. From becoming Osu's largest streamer, to reaching the top of the world as an Osu champion, for Ed, it was truly a dream come true on all fronts. One problem, I think he forgot his YouTube password. While Ed was grinding for tournaments and becoming the best version of himself as a player on stream, he more or less neglected his YouTube account, which spawned memes in his comment section. You won't make it that far in any of his comment sections without finding a comment that says he finally remembered his YouTube password. Yeah, despite him winning Corsace and the Osu World Cup in the same year and playing frequently on stream, he was still getting memed on for not uploading YouTube content. I can already imagine the YouTube comments. It's a mixture of like, oh, he found his YouTube password, or oh, the channel isn't dead, or oh, holy shit, I thought you died, or oh, holy fuck, dude, our yearly upload, etc, etc, dude. You can't make this up. This should not be possible. This man is out here winning the biggest Osu tournaments in existence, yet he can't catch a break from his YouTube audience. I guess Twitch chat is right about poking fun at YouTube frogs. Sorry guys. But luckily, things were going to change content-wise. First and foremost, Ed would gather an editing team to put out more videos on his YouTube channel while he continued streaming on Twitch. While the world was still locked down, his Twitch stream grew more than ever. <coughs> Get to streamer. <laughs> oh, 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 no way, no way, no way. <laughs> okay, the BTMC is a Genshin streamer joke has run dry, but when he did stream a lot of Genshin Impact in 2021, it led to increasingly fast growth on Twitch, and more importantly, allowed him to connect with Genshin content creators and streamers, which allowed him to grow even more, allowing him to reach 300,000 followers on Twitch in June 2021. And for whatever reason, everyone decided to forget that he literally won the last rendition of the Osu World Cup and became an Osu champion just to meme on him and tell him that he's a Genshin streamer. You will already know that something like this can only happen to Ed. And let's be honest, he kind of embraces the meme. And speaking of embracing, you know how Ed was never able to set a unique score? Well, things have changed. He had an absolute pop-off on Embrace by the Flame, a map which had no FCs at the time. He was gonna do it. He was finally going to- No! <laughs> Uh, well shit. Don't worry, he started grinding the map for a second time, and this time he was approaching the ending with even better accuracy than last time. Forget the choke that happened a little while ago. He was going to have a unique- No fucking way! Not a challenge! At least it's number one on the leaderboard? Memes aside, 2021 would probably mark the most important step in Ed's career, moving to Los Angeles. During the summer, Ed would pack his bags and move into Boxbox's house, which had its fair share of notable streamers. This upped the ante for crazier things for Ed to do on stream, just like what he used to do a few years ago and what the pandemic robbed us of. And of course, the craziness did ensue. Boxbox challenged Ed to set insanely high PP plays in exchange for subs. And if you know Ed, he's not one to back down from a challenge, and he got to work. 
Just 11 days into September, he would set the 800pp play for the 100 subs by setting the first Hard Rock FC on the Legendary difficulty of Highway to Oblivion. This play came as a massive shock to everyone watching, as Ed's play count dissipated in the last few months because of the move to LA, but he proved that he's still sharp as ever. The 900 and 1k pp plays would not come as easily, however. While Ed was unfortunately not able to set the 1k pp score, he was finally able to get his 900 pp play on Yomi Yori. This play is crazy. He's tied for the highest accuracy FC on the map, is number 2 overall on the map, and proved that hard work trumps all. This map is Ed's ninth most played map, and his reaction to the FC says it all. Oh, yeah. Let's go! Finally, after more than two years, he beat his legendary play on Raise My Sword. Finally, he had a 900 PP score. And to this day, this is his top play in Osu. Today, we can safely say that Ed has taken Osu and the Osu community to heights no one thought were possible. Starting out as just your average student playing video games after school, he quickly blossomed into Osu's recognizable figure thanks to his skill and even more thanks to his personality and entertainment capabilities. He has changed from being pretty good at the game to being one of the absolute best, becoming an Osu champion in the process. He went from playing with a baguette and dressing up as an anime girl to becoming friends with some of the largest Twitch streamers. Okay, maybe one of those things hasn't changed. His influence is so great that he undoubtedly brought many new players into Osu. Hell, he even showcased what this game had to offer live on stage at PAX East. But above all else, the one thing that makes him so special is that he will never forget where he came from how he started, and the viewers that give him the chance to do this in the first place. Together, we've seen him grow into the player, content creator, and person that he is today. From the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and everything in between, Ed has created countless memories alongside us that we will not soon forget. Knowing Ed, there are more memories like these lying ahead in the future, and I'm sure it means the world to him to get the chance to share those memories alongside us. Dude. Holy shit, guys. I just smashed the like button because I enjoyed this video. I also subscribed because it's free and I can unsubscribe at any point in time. Yeah.